This is the AH-56 Cheyenne, one of the most advanced helicopters that never made it into full production. Designed to be fast, heavily armored, and armed, it was built to push the limits of attack helicopters. The Cheyenne was developed to meet the U.S. Army's need for a fast, armored, and heavily armed helicopter. Its mission was to strengthen the Army's escort and attack capabilities in modern combat. The Cheyenne featured a revolutionary compound helicopter configuration, as well as a gyro-controlled rigid rotor and three-bladed pusher-tail propeller, as well as a four-bladed anti-torque rotor. It had small wings attached to the side of the fuselage that could offload the rotor during high-speed flight. The Cheyenne was designed with a crew of two, seated in tandem in an enclosed cockpit. The gunner co-pilot sat in front of the pilot on a gun platform that could swivel a full 360 degrees, allowing for unmatched targeting flexibility. The helicopter featured six underwing attachment points, ideal for mounting missiles or rocket pods. On top of that, the Cheyenne was outfitted with an advanced weapon sighting system, which included night vision equipment and a helmet-mounted gun sight. Developed as Lockheed's entry in the Army's Advanced Aerial Fire Support System competition, the Cheyenne was a highly sophisticated compound rotorcraft. Its design incorporated several pioneering features from Lockheed's earlier XH-51A. In March 1966, the Cheyenne was named the winner of the Aerial Fire Support competition, leading to an Army contract for 10 YAH-56A prototypes. The first prototype took to the skies in September 1967, and by July 1968, all 10 aircraft were delivered to the Army for flight testing. Following these tests, the Army placed an initial order for 375 production units in January 1968, and the prototypes were officially redesignated as AH-56A in early 1969. However, during further flight testing, the Cheyenne encountered some serious issues. There were three crashes, and it became clear that the helicopter was unstable at high speeds over 320 kilometers per hour. The situation worsened after the third crash in 1969, when a main rotor collided with the fuselage. As a result, the production order was delayed, casting doubt on the Cheyenne's future. The Cheyenne was undoubtedly an exotic-looking aircraft. Its long, narrow fuselage featured an oversized segmented canopy covering a tandem two-seat cockpit. The tail boom held a large ventral fin, a conventional anti-torque tail rotor, and a unique pusher propeller. A pair of small, low-set stub wings fixed to the fuselage sides contributed to the Cheyenne's hybrid look, as did its retractable wheeled main landing gear. Despite its awkward look on the ground, the AH-56A was incredibly agile and fast in flight. This impressive performance came from an innovative propulsion system centered around a 3,435 horsepower General Electric shaft turbine engine. This engine powered a rigid four-bladed main rotor, the anti-torque rotor, and the pusher propeller at the tail's end. In vertical and hovering flight, all power went to the main and anti-torque rotors. During forward flight, most of the power was redirected to the pusher propeller, with lift provided by the stub wings and the windmilling main rotor. In optimal conditions, the AH-56A could reach speeds over 400 km per hour at sea level. The Cheyenne was powered by a General Electric T-64 turbine engine, delivering over 3,400 shaft horsepower. It featured an 8-meter span stub wing with a surface area of 24 square meters. The Cheyenne could cruise at 388 km per hour and reach a maximum speed of 407 km per hour. It had an impressive rate of climb exceeding 1,025 meters per minute and a substantial range of 1,970 kilometers. The Cheyenne never entered regular Army service due to several key issues. The flight test program uncovered significant problems with its innovative propulsion system, leading to a fatal crash of one prototype. Additionally, by March 1969, cost overruns had increased the per-unit price which was unacceptable given the Army's high expenses in Vietnam. And finally, the U.S. Air Force had become increasingly vocal in its opposition to the Army's acquisition of an aircraft as capable as the Cheyenne and continued to push for the cancellation of the AH-56 project.
the Army ultimately decided to develop a cheaper and less sophisticated helicopter in place of the Cheyenne, and in August 1972 formally terminated the AH-56 program.